I'm Massimo Bottura, you are? I am Justin Balamshu. Okay, so that we are perfect, you see? Thank you very much. So if you don't know Massimo as 2016 owner of the best restaurant in the world, you probably know about him in context of food waste. And what I want to ask, first of all, is Massimo, how did you get interested in food waste in the first place? Uh, ma it was uh, 2014 and uh, there was the Universal Exposition in Milan. As, uh, as usual in Italy, start all this uh, incredible polemic and confusion and, uh, you know, and uh, the theme of the Universal Exposition in Italy was feed the planet, no? Perfect. And, uh, but all these uh, states, they were so interested in uh, having us uh, as the chefs uh, involved in parties and, you know, many different situations, but not, never ask what we really think about that. And, uh, and so uh, I decided to, to do my own pavilion outside. You know, there is a very important man, it was a very important man in Modena called Enzo Ferrari, the guy who built the very fast car, uh, who, who was saying, if you can dream it, you can make it. And uh, I start calling all my friends, starting from uh, René, Ducasse, uh, Michel, Le Troy uh, blah, blah, blah. And everybody said, that's a great idea. Let's do it all together. So I approach uh, a very important guy called uh, Davide Rampello, who, has, uh, who is uh, very involved in art, in uh, design and architecture. And we went to knock at the door of the church. And the church said, thank you, Massimo, for this incredible energy and positive uh, approach. We're going to help you. And uh, they gave us uh, an old theater outside of Milan in the poorest place uh, in a very poor neighborhood in Milan called Quartiere Greco that was abandoned uh, since uh, 15 years before and, and full of dust. Um, but all together, you know, the culture, architecture, artists, designer, uh, chefs, we put together an amazing project and was an incredible success. And uh, we just, uh, you know, went through numbers that are simple. 860 million people, they don't have anything to eat. And uh, 1.5 bar 8 uh, are overweight and 1.3 tons of food, billion tons of food are wasted every year. So it's not about produce more, it's about uh, um, waste less. And uh, what, what I, I uh, we, we, we came out with a new word because we have to stop about thinking of waste. The new word is like um, um, ordinary ingredients. Ordinary ingredients that ca they can make the difference, you know? You mentioned art and design, and that, that aesthetic is very important to you, isn't it? For me, it's uh, very important, because uh, everybody has uh, to have the opportunity to, to live and breathe and see and eat uh, on beautiful tables, being served uh, and uh, surrounded by art uh, and, uh, you know, music. Uh, I think uh, through beauty, you really can, uh, can change the world. And, uh, and that uh, is exactly the same way, you know, you need a great chef. Because the chefs, uh, they devoted, they, they gave you time, uh, creativity, and, uh, you know, they also find a way, they make visible the invisible for everybody, you know. And then, um, then Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. You've yeah. got to tell, you tell me a great story about your tattoo. You've got to <laughs> tell these guys about your tattoo. <laughs> uh, about the first day? No, that, that's insane. You, you have to live. Me, Christina, we can understand, and Lara, we were there, like... Uh, uh, but uh, you, you cannot imagine uh, the day of the opening in a place like this, uh, not having water, electricity, and gas. So, <laughs> what are we gonna do? And, uh, but Brazilians are, are Brazilians, you know? And so, the first thing that we got was water 
because they connect the water with a building that was close to ours. And so they broke into a wall, they listened where the water was, and they connect their water with our uh, building, you know. And we got the water around 10 in the morning. Then uh, electricity. So we didn't have any electricity. So I called my friend, an artist, Vic Muniz, and uh, his, uh, his wife was very connected with, uh, because uh, she just restored uh, and she was very into the Olympics. So they call, uh, she called a company who brought a big generator and uh, around two in the afternoon, we had electricity. So the, par the, the people they were, we were expecting, they had to come in uh, at six, but we did, still we didn't have any gas. So. Uh, what we went to a, a store close to to where we were, and we bought like these small burners, camping burners, uh, and uh, and uh, and we start like that, you know. But what about the tattoo? Uh, <laughs> no, that then uh, then uh, you know. In my idea, you know, it was my idea of cooking that night was pasta, no? So, but. Uh, you know, we were surrounded by bananas and uh, there was bananas everywhere and they were spending time just to peel and work with bananas. So from the experience in Milan, I've learned how to work with banana peels. And uh, so we, uh, in the, the first uh, project was, uh, okay, as a main course, we're going to serve uh, pasta alla carbonara, no? With uh, egg yolk, uh, some, we had parmigiano, reggiano, rind, and, uh, you know, we were grating, and, but we'd miss the, the bacon. So I had this idea. Uh, I saw a little piece of bacon that was enough for two people, maybe three. And so I said, okay. Why if, without saying anything, we're going to work with banana peels and transform banana peels into bacon? <laughs> and, uh, you know, that sounds crazy. But in that moment, you have to do something, you know, because you, have, uh, you expect uh, 80, uh, 80, 100 people, uh, you know, for, for the opening. So what we did, we, we, I remember, you know, the Brazilian, they were working with banana peels, boiling them, and then uh, saute. And uh, we put on the grill, and then we toasted in the oven, but the oven exploded. <laughs> and uh, so we had to take off the banana peels, go in the, in, the, in the little garden that was outside. We set up a smoker, and we smoked the banana peel till they got crunchy. And uh, with the bacon, we slide the bacon on the top of these peels. And, uh, you know, the melting of the bacon gave this idea of fattiness as a, as a bacon. So at that point, we serve a carbonara instead of with banana peels, uh, instead of bacon with banana peels, lightly smoked, uh, very deeply smoked. And, uh, and no one, no one said anything, you know, even the volunteers and, uh, you know, the people there, they were like, hmm, that's very good, the carbonara. I said, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That's fantastic. So, um, so Massimo's Food for Soul organization has started these two incredible repertorio in Milan and then in Rio de Janeiro, and now London. Why London? I said, I said because London chose me. It is true. I didn't explain to the question, but uh, I was, uh, I was telling before. You know, it was so simple. Everything. You know, we met at the at the at the newspaper, and uh, we went there. We, we saw the the truck, the Felix truck. We walk into this place, and it was so beautiful. The architecture was so amazing, and we immediately saw the potential. Of this, uh, of this place, and uh, you know, 20 minutes there, we decide let's do it, and we did it. And this was like six months ago. Yeah, about six months. Six months ago, I said, okay. So who knows an architect? So, ah, I have a friend, Charles. He's an architect, and he's, he can help us. Where is Charles? Where was Charles? Uh, yeah, he's somewhere. I know there is. Uh, and uh, and uh, you know, he, he called immediately. And, uh, you know, 
if you want to make it, you can make it, you know. So we hope, we hope that some of you come along and have a look. It's uh, down in Earl's Court in Phil Beach Gardens. And Massimo, what do you make of the London food scene? What do you think? I think, uh, I think uh, London was uh, the, perfect, uh, the perfect place because uh, in a moment like this, in which uh, everybody are building walls, uh, you know, we are breaking walls. And, uh, you know, we, this is a project of inclusion. We want the people with us. We break the walls, we open the door, and we let them in, you know. Come on, guys, come, in, come with us, share with us this amazing food. And, uh, you know, it's exactly how we think, you know. And the next one is going to be United States. So, another wall. We're going to break another wall. Next question. Right, we've got a couple of questions from the audience. Yep. Um, Malik. <coughs> Vai Malik, grande. He wants to know, what is your top advice for a young aspiring chef? Uh, three ingredients. Hum humility, passion and dream. Always uh, they have to be with you. You travel a lot. You get exposed all over with your eyes and your ears open to absorb a different culture. But never forget who you are and where you come from. This is my major suggestion. So I've got another question. I can't remember her name, but she asked me to ask you, is everything on chef's table true? <laughs> where is it? Where is she? I don't know. Uh, everything is true and uh, even more, I think, even more, because uh, I think David Gelb didn't went, he, he didn't go so deep into how struggling it was in the beginning. You know, uh, in the beginning, you know, people now are like, especially young, they want to be there uh, so quick, so quick. We are there, we want visibility. And then they get washed away at the first storm. And uh, I think, uh, I think uh, we really, if it wasn't for my, my in-laws, for example, uh, they were helping us uh, in many different ways, especially pushing us uh, to keep going, you know, or for Lara that she, she didn't, uh, she, did, she said, in, with, with, I had a contract to move to London, you know, uh, uh, with a very important company in Italy and moved my restaurant in London, she said, if you, if you don't make it here in your place, you're going to regret for the rest of your life. And this was 2001. And, uh, you know, at the end of 2001, we got uh, the best restaurant, the best new, the best meal, uh, the first star Michelin, and the best uh, young chef uh, in Italy. So, and everything changed. But if, uh, you know, I was ready to move. Uh, well, we've we got time for one question. If there's anyone would like to ask a question, you'll have to shout. No. Favorite meal. Favorite meal. You know, there's no. My mom is no more with me. You know, you know when uh, I, they always ask me <coughs> where I go when I travel, and uh, I usually go to my friends. You know, um, and uh, and uh, and uh, most of the time, especially when I'm by myself or, uh, and I'm away for a conference or with Lara, we eat in the kitchen because uh, you know. It's a very, it's very touching because they cook for me as a friend, not as a, you know, critic or chef or whatever. And so this is very important, I think, because, uh, because I, I don't know, if, I don't have my mom and my dad anymore. So uh, that was my favorite meal. But now, you know, it's, uh, it's when when a friend is cooking for you. He's cooking with his art. I remember Daniel, he was, uh, I was uh, in New York one night and they said, what can I cook for you? Fried chicken. And so he made fried chicken, but it was the most amazing fried chicken and I enjoy so much. And that's how, that's what I want when I travel, you know? Good. Well, thank you very much to Massimo. And I, we also, Massimo and I also want to thank his team. Sophia, Christina, and of course his wife Lara for the and their team for the amazing work they've done getting the repertorio up yes. this week. Please come and have a look. Thank you. You have to. Thank you. <laughs> you can go to
China and learn, uh, you know, this kind of different approach. Because Japan and Italy are very similar in the uh, uh, obsession about quality of the ingredients and less technique. Um, France and China are more about technique and sources and, uh, you know, they work like that. So th it's very, very important. Thank you so much. I'll just take a quick picture.